Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's July 31st, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of any terminal length, episode number 658. And it's that time of the month, folks. It's that time again. Where Gary has more leg on his, on his video stream, but that's a completely different issue. <laughs> I don't hey. know what to do to fix it. Yeah, we'll work around it. This is technically an audio podcast. The video's for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's that time of the month. Hey, wait a minute. It's actually in this month. We're doing... I'm so Don't you know that it's hot, hot, hot? Uh, <clears throat> this month's drama comes from the fact that, uh, for some reason, my apartment complex maintenance group don't know how to make sure that they fix something. <clears throat> Mainly my air conditioning. There was one day this month where everything was gorgeous. I set my my air conditioning down to 40. It didn't or 70 degrees, and didn't quite get to 70, and then the next day, it wasn't cooling again. Boo. So it made, but the ticket was still open, so I'm like, oh, they must still be, like, checking on things, blah, 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 or something. Then I get a notice saying, say, note, replaced fuse, canceled. <laughs> they didn't close the ticket, they canceled it. I think, I, I, I have think this, the ticket timed out because they didn't close it. And so it just sent all the updates by email or something. And so it was like, uh, it was working for one day, but then it wasn't. So I opened up the, uh, another ticket. By the way, this is my fourth work order for this. <sighs> Okay. Uh, that's the entire month. So, <clears throat> yeah. I've been, uh, don't worry. I've been keeping my blinds closed. I've been, uh, before the show, I had some frozen yogurt. Keeping myself cool as best as possible. I keep thinking now I need to run to Target to get myself a, a dehumidifier because I don't think it's necessarily dehumidifying my apartment. At all, because the fan runs it well, at least indoors. Uh, but I also a hey, hey, walking around my building, looking at uh, all the other apartments, issue units. Mine is by far the oldest. Okay, it makes me feel. By this time, they should probably have replaced it with a newer model. I mean, so um, right, yes. Um, Considering all yeah. we've, you know, we've heard your AC unit several times <laughs> over the episodes. Transferring so I know. Not cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, we, we know it, it'd be jacked up and shit. So, um, and, and now you're on your fourth ticket to get it fixed. And I'm kind of like. I would be, uh, never mind. Uh, for me, I would be for going rent. 
and being like, you have not fixed this problem. Like, I need you to fix this problem. Because this is Texas. And I know you've lived there a while, and, and I understand that, and I can respect that. But the purpose of a, you know, kind of living in this area, this idea of, you know, renting and all that stuff is that these things are taken care of. Mm-hmm. And apparently for a day it was, but like, mm-mm, no, we would not, I would not, mm-mm. like it, it, it bothers me that it's taken this long for them to take care of it, especially considering how hot it gets. But I, I'm glad that you're taking care of yourself. I'm glad you're trying to keep cool. I'm, assu- I'm assuming you're, you know, doing what you can. Um, as someone who has had to deal with AC's breaking down randomly um, over the years since I've moved into this house. Um, I know it sucks. Well, also, I have a little more more tolerance to the heat. Very true. Very, very true. Because, baby, no. I am am happy that this fan up here above me is still running, and it's still 60-something. You know, the the thermostat is still set at 60-something. So, Yeah, 67 is overkill for me. Yeah. Oh, we're at 68. I think, oh, wait. What did we do? we change it? No, it's 68. I mean, I, I, I think you have it. It's like 68 in order to make sure the upstairs is like. Yeah, 70. that's the main reason. Because that's where we sleep. And, um, but I have and, a lot less space. Yes. And this summer has been hot. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, and I know you're hot too. Obviously, I mean, right, right. No, <laughs> anyway. I, 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 I <laughs> but like the, the, the idea of heat and I, mm-mm. and humidity. Yeah. Oh, that. I'm too. not. I'm not in the desert, by the way. <laughs> that too. We're. we that... I may be in Texas, but I'm not in a desert area. So, so they, it does get. Quite humid. Let me see. Actually, I got oh, oh, oh! Today it's actually lower. It's uh twenty nine, twenty nine percent humidity. Mm. Uh, I do like how tomorrow it says light rain. Mm. I doubt it. <laughs> it yeah. has been doing this to me all month. I've been hoping for just like a day of rain, mm-hmm. like just even a day of rain and it keeps showing it up like in the in the future forecast uh a day when they're expecting rain next day that day is no longer rainy mm. so it's like nah, i'll believe it when yeah. i see it apparently uh, tomorrow and tuesday there's supposed to be some light rain it'd be great if it would actually happen which highly doubtful but, mm. At least yeah. twenty nine. Yeah, last uh, few day, days, few weeks, uh, it's been uh, more than. Uh, there was one day, or most of the time, it was around fifty, and then I think I I saw one day it was like the midi was like at uh, eighty something. But the nice thing is, is I have an office I can go to for work. Yes. Good. So at least five days so, out a week. Yeah, and at least you have a some bit of a reprieve. Yeah, that does. That also can be a like a mind fucking fuckery when you like you you go to work and it's nice and cool and you spend like eight plus hours there and then you go home and you walk through your front door and you just get hit with like heat. Fortunately. <laughs> Usually through the evening, it gets down into the uh, seven, or late seventies, which is perfect. Mm. Cool. So I can like are not cool. Apartment. Mm. Are you on a window. first floor? I am first floor. Okay. That first helps. floor, mostly surrounded. Okay. I'm, that does help. One so. one side is. Com- to the outside, my doorways to the outside, but everything else there's an apartment. 
department in between. Hmm. Cool. <sighs> well, that's 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 that. Okay. Otherwise, Final Fantasy D and D. Blah blah. <laughs> Second bird, same as first. Damon. Um. Oh shit. Typing these in. Nope, that's not what I want. There you. Go. Fuck you. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um. So. I said Onyx travels, but I only really travel for one event. Um, I've been with, as I mentioned, I've been an associate member of Onyx since March. Um, and uh, last month, or this month, I should say, um, they actually had an event here in town. It was a combination with Cincinnati Leather, and I was able to watch um, some of my um, brothers do um, classes. It was rather in, in, um, insightful, and then the evening was just like a celebration, you know, party kind of get together. So I would really enjoy that. Um, and then just last weekend, as I wasn't on the show, um, I had I was in Detroit for their event that they call Keek Museum, um, and it is essentially a um, showing off kinks for people. Um, play party kind of thing where you know you people are able to like explore some random things that people were able to produce and i myself was able to do one on impact play which i was very happy to do um i had wished i'd had more time to do stuff but they were kind of doing things in like 30 minute chunks um so i was early enough that i could do it and then i helped volunteer for the event and i still had some fun it was a good weekend it was a good time to get away um for a little bit I really enjoyed it. Um, with that, uh, of course, transitions. So I just got a text message, um, or not text message, but a messenger chat from Yahoo, um, Facebook. Um, so I am now officially, as of this month, the uh, vice president of membership for the Cincinnati Men's Course. Uh, I am taking over the role for um, our cur- previous, our, well, current uh, well, previous uh, VP of membership, who is now the um, president of the board. Um, he got a vote in uh, back in May. So, and then July is when the year starts for him. Um, and in addition to that, <laughs> not too long after all of this has happened, um, this past week, uh, we've had some very interesting shakeups. Um, our um, former AD, artistic director, uh, resigned effective immediately on Monday. <laughs> and by Thursday, we have a new a- interim artistic director. Um, so um, kudos to our, congrats to our former AD on finding uh, another opportunity and moving on to a bigger and better things. And then congrats to our interim AD for coming in kind of in a clutch. Uh, We've got a month before we started rehearsals. So um, that was fun trying to get all of that together. Um, Wow. Yeah. Um, So I'm learning the ropes. We're we're dealing with all this. I'm, I'm, you know, kudos to our board for making some really quick decisions, but uh, in addition to that, we will be starting a search again for a new artistic director. Uh, while an interim can apply, it does not necessarily mean that they are guaranteed the spot. Right. So that part. So that's going to be a fun year. Uh, and then kind of my final thing to mention, which is sort of the most important thing, um, Jim and I have set a date for our wedding um we are getting married june 11th 2023 um barring state of the world or at least the united states <laughs> <laughs> so cur- the date is set that date is set and we've 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 made the we put a deposit down on the space we're going to have the of uh, the wedding and reception at we have set a dj um, I am in talks with the photographer. I know a few. Huh? Um, and um, so everything else is kind of set and ready to go. 
it's just a matter of then like getting invitations and all that. Now, a caveat to all of this, as if you are a citizen of the United States and hearing this, you do understand there's a lot of shit going down and has gone down recently in regards to Supreme Court, yada, yada, yada. With that being said, we have a caveat. Jim and I have talked about it. There is a possibility, depending on, again, how things are going, if it becomes an issue, kind of already is, but if it becomes an issue, we are planning to still have the event in June, but we will do something sooner in regards to actually getting married. Um, I don't like thinking that way, but I have to be honest with, we have to be honest with ourselves and honest with the status, the state of our country and understand that, you know, there's a possibility. So, um, should that be the case? I, I, I will, there might be an announcement. I don't know. I don't know if we will have the time to do it depending on how soon it happens, but more than likely should it become a possibility that it won't be able to happen in June of 2023, we will plan to get married sooner and then have a celebration later. Yeah. We'll get the official shit down and then we'll have the celebration in June. Or the court get get a license, have a witness, blah, 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 blah. And then do all the uh, pomp and circumstance. Right. So, You said that was June 11th? Yes. It is a Sunday. I was just making note of that. (laughs) I was putting it on the calendar. Something tells me you won't be available to record that day. I'm not. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having a uh, a, uh, uh, flashback Um, episode on that weekend. Because most (laughs) likely, I know that there's at least two people on this podcast who might be receiving invitations. Um, I not necessarily going to attend, but <laughs> but we'll at least get the invitation. Mm-hmm. It's easier for one one of us to attend than in, for the other. Fair, fair, fair. Well, and who knows what the what my situation will be? <sighs> not that I wouldn't want to be there. Yes, I I know, and 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 as a kind of not cap yeah like i would love to have everyone at the wedding but bitch no um mm-hmm. there's <laughs> there's only so many people you can invite and so much space you can do um and each person who attends is essentially another you know drop of money so it it i think we will be doing we haven't talked about it fully but at least with invites i think we will probably do a broader we have a list we've made a list and we know about how many that is and we may do a broader thing um uh online or what have you to just like be like i know you can't be there but maybe you can help us just make sure there's good wi-fi maybe an ethernet connection and (laughs) right set up a camera and microphone there we go our Make DJ will help with the microphone, the the, the sound system. Which is <laughs> so so that cool. episode of Cups of the Loud could possibly just be streaming the live. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know I'm teasing, right? <laughs> mm. No. <laughs> I'm teasing. And see, I was going to say, no, I don't know you're teasing. And I'm already thinking like, oh my God, Cups Out Loud Wedding. That'll be the episode. <laughs> We'll workshop it. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be a live roving reporter on the road talking to, to the guests at the wedding. Okay, so oh, it won't it won't be a flashback <laughs> episode. It'll be an OTR. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Queen. Oh. But that's all for me. Gary. Uh, so I have a couple things going on. Apparently Skype is being weird and like causing a video lag. I can't figure out anything else. I've already checked all my settings and shut things down and done Please. several speed tests. The audio is the important part. Yeah. Um, okay. So frustration. Uh, this is mostly about work 
it's just been a busy summer. We're down 25% of our staff for our division. Mm. Uh, other people are kind of in the same boat. I'm finding out in other areas, like meaning other health departments. Um, so yeah. And uh, it's also now is not the time to have a shortage of workforce in public health mm. with the newest variant of COVID and now with monkeypox. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty mm-hmm. chilling. So uh, there's that. Anyways, uh, I'm going to jump ahead to what happened this weekend. So I had my cherry popped. I went to Chicago. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, the national LGBTQ health conference was taking place in Chicago this past uh, weekend. Well, this weekend, actually, that just ended today. Um, it was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I got to travel to Chicago. I flew in on Wednesday, flew back today. Um, it was a really good experience. Uh, I have reached out to a couple other people who kind of work in different fields, but are, um, SGM, as we say, sexual gender minority individuals to be like, hey, I think this is something that you should think about. Um, it mm-hmm. happens every two years. At least that's the cycle. They've typically done it every two years. In the past couple of years, we're a little wonky because of this thing called Miss Rona. Uh, so this year was the first in person since before the pandemic. Uh, they had over 400 attendees, many, many, many presentations. It felt like speed dating. There was a ton of like info and data covered it was really really good um so i'm looking forward to going back in two years in 2024 yay but i also got to see chicago like yay i did not do the traditional tourist things so i did not go see what used to be known as the sears tower i did not see the bean um however it was my first time in a big city because i've never been to new york or la or miami Um, like to travel around. I rode the transit system. Mm. I got to do the subway slash um, train Mm -hmm. uh, situation, which was very interesting because it it started, well, it's a long story, but I was above ground and then I had to switch and then I was below ground and I came above ground, which I did not know was going to happen because I thought it was a subway, like legit, like it's always Mm -hmm, under. mm -hmm. So that was a whole thing. Um, I got to see some interesting things. I got to visit a Frank Lloyd Wright architectural home, which Mm. is one of my favorite things to do because it's one of my favorite architects. Um, I I pointed out something. Well, there's like about five or six homes. There's about five properties, I should say, in Chicago that are available for touring. Um, And I went to one of them. I pointed out something on the tour that the tour guide had never noticed about the house. And puzzled them, kind of stumped them. So that was fun. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get into it, but it was it was just a random kind of thing. And I was like, did you notice? And they were like, what? And then they looked and they were like, I never noticed that before. Um, to be fair, they are a younger person who's doing the tour who has been doing it for a little while. So they said they were going to check in with some of the other tour guides to see if they knew anything about what I pointed out. But it was good to get reacquainted with seeing that architecture again in a new place in a new building. Because I think I've probably done about six or seven tours at this time, various buildings, various homes. Um, so that was good. I got to do that. I went to the Leather Archives and Museum. Ooh. Um, I would really like us to do an episode about it. I think, Damon, you've been there. Um, and we can have a discussion about its significance, what it covers, what it does. Um <sighs> Even if you're not into leather and kink, I really think you should go visit. You should go see it. It's culturally so significant. And the library is astounding. It's not very big, like in terms of physical size. But let me tell you, I got goosebumps looking at complete collections of pulp fiction sets of MSM stories Mm. like and 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 they're in this location because they're like hyper masculine kind of storylines you know truckers young boys coaches so like this stuff that we grew up on in a way from the 70s and 80s into the 90s only they're like those little paperback novel books that you would buy in the adult bookstore 
that Mm -hmm. were never really shown in like the regular drugstore back in the five and dime days when pulp like fiction kind of fantasy things because this is very adult erotica kind of stuff so it was astounding um i got to be at a couple of different gay bars i went to a gay bar where they uh, aired the finale of rupaul's drag race uh, all star season seven if you want to hear more about that you should listen to the episode that damon and i just recorded literally like uh, half an hour ago um (laughs) um, that'll be coming out later this week i also went to a bear bar in chicago um, called sofo s-o-f-o and uh, it was a cute place. It reminds me a lot of the Leather Stallion in Cleveland. Um, smaller, but fun. Um, spotted a guy in the crowd that had been cruising and chatting with me on Growler. That was fun. Um, but he was there for a wedding with a bunch of people. So I didn't think it was appropriate to like kind of up and talk to him out of the blue like that. Um, as we were leaving on the patio, there was this nice big bear that like I looked at three times. And every time I looked at him as I was walking away, he met my gaze. Oh, so thank you for that. Because <laughs> um, it was a little affirming. And honestly, I thought he looked like Jason from B Talk. Now that's a throwback to an that's old amazing. podcast way back in the day. But I'm wow. like, oh, that looks like Jason. That's why I kept looking. And every time I looked at him, he looked at me like he knew me. And I was like, this is wild. But it wasn't him. Mm. Plus, we're in Chicago. And he's still in Minnesota, I believe. Now, could it have been him? Eh, maybe. But I don't think it was him. I mean, Chicago's so, not that far from the twin cities it's no. still a jaunt but it, it's right. not a day trip thing but yeah yeah yeah. but um no so yeah uh to be in a in a gay quote-unquote area of a city with a, a large um lgbtq plus population was nice had a couple of really good f- meals and food had a wonderful time having dinner with carlos thank you for being the host um because we went to this uh, southern new orleans inspired um restaurant and what i love about being in a big city is uh, a lot of the restaurants have patio seating and they have like doors or windows that are open so people are walking by on the sidewalk and people can be seated right inside the building um it is the perfect cock watching level while you are having <laughs> drinks and a meal um and you get to see all the asses walk by so that was enjoyable (laughs) in that part of town um so yeah it was really really great and here's the surprise reveal if my co-hosts have looked at the telegram for just the hosts Mm -hmm. you will see a picture of me with lloyd (gasps) as in the lloyd from London, the UK, who is one of our patrons and multi-year listeners, literally Sunday at the end of the show, he typed in something in the live chat about being in the US and he mentioned he was going to be in Chicago. So I immediately private messaged him and I was like, when are you going to be in Chicago? Because I was like, <laughs> this is crazy. And he's like, oh, I'm arriving in a couple of days. And our schedules literally overlapped. Wow. So, he was staying with a friend. Um, I want to give a shout out to Todd, who actually is a, an attendee in the past of Drenched Fur, because I kept looking at him and I was like, God, he looks so familiar. And it's not just because he's like this, you know, cute little uh, daddy um, bear that, you know, with a big long beard and stuff like that. I mean, there was a lot of very nice attributes about him, but I was like, there's something about him. And we were talking and he said, where are you from? And I said, oh, Pennsylvania. And he said, really, where from? And I said, Erie. And he goes, oh, I've been there. He's like, I went there for a bear event. <laughs> And I said, oh, you've been to Drudge Fur. And he goes, uh, it was a long time ago. I think it's what it's called. And I and he said, you know about it? And I said, yes, because I'm in charge of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I said, yeah, that sure place, you look so familiar. But um, he was... He was Lloyd's host, um, and he was ah. incredibly pleasant. Um, he gave us a little bit of a walking tour, um, drove us around. We went out and had dinner at Replay. Um, we had such a great gay time. Um, there is something to be said for for people to bond and to just have fun. We were catty. We told stories. We just we had such a good time. Um, mm. It was really really nice. But hanging out with Lloyd was great, um, and I've chatted with him since. Lloyd, I am so happy that you are finally getting your sleep schedule figured out and you are better because Todd um, had driven part of the way and he he offered to give me a ride back to the hotel. He wasn't comfortable with me taking transit. So apparently certain areas, certain places should not use transit at mm. certain 
stuff. Um, and more, there were several, there were a handful of people that told me they were like, you don't, don't, don't take transit. Don't take the bus. Like take a, mm. take a Uber, take a lift. I will take you home. Something. And I was like, wow. Okay. So I thank people for watching out for me. Um, it was really, really good. But uh, yeah, um, I, for those of you that are food type people, I got to visit Italy in Chicago, uh, which is an amazing marketplace that brings a lot of Italian based foods here and makes a lot of stuff on premise uh, at a really high quality. So I got to have gelato while I was there. I got some cannoli, of course. Um, I had a uh, sandwich and stuff that I brought for lunch uh, for back to my hotel room. I had Italian beef. Uh, Midwest beef, uh, and that's kind of a big thing um, in Chicago, uh, with gravy. I went to Pontillo's uh, last night for dinner. Um, so I, I kind of, I don't want to say I lived it up, but I had a really, really nice. Good- and and it was positive for work. I made some really good connections with some people. Um, I met somebody that I'm hoping I can have on as a future guest. Um, I didn't really plug the podcast a whole lot because I didn't want to, you know, be that person. But I met um, this lovely uh, person who is a non-binary trans pup that also I believe is a part of the bear community at the conference and. Uh-huh. We really kind of like hit it off and it was comical because the AIDS 2022 conference was happening in Montreal this very weekend. And someone I follow that goes there, who's a person living with longtime survivor said, who is your conference husband? And that made me laugh because it made me think about like bear runs and stuff like, you know, like you might have your actual partner or spouse, but especially if you're single, you might have like a run husband or something of that sort. Like Drew and I were going to be going to World Bear Weekend in September. So we're run husbands, quote unquote. Like, you know, we're traveling <laughs> and hanging out together. So I thought of that. And that's what this person and I were kind of like um, at this conference I just went to that we happened to to meet up. And the way we met up, of course, was Growler. Because you Why do not? what you do. Right. You, you when know, you have you Growler just... and you go to a new location, everybody local is going to start pinging you. Well, yeah. I mean, you... You become popular and stuff. And I did disappoint a fair number of people. And I apologize. You know, there were, there were several locals that were interested in getting to meeting, knowing me. Um, That said, uh, someone did make a comment about, Oh, how uh, serendipitous that you're having this national health conference for the gay community and monkeypox is going on. And then I had to explain that the agenda and the plenary, as we call it, all the topics to be discussed were planned months in advance. So monkeypox wasn't really the reason we were there, but it was discussed a little bit in some of the bigger uh, whole house sessions as as it comes uh, about. But yeah, it was uh, so because MPX is out there and vaccines are kind of all over the place in terms of accessibility and Mm -hmm. um, opportunity. Uh, I really chose to refrain quite a quite a bit um, from the potential opportunities, but I did tell a couple of lovely individuals that um, when I'm in the area again or for a pass cross, that you know there, there are possibilities. I'm not gonna should our pass cross again. Yes, maybe yes. some perhaps someday. So I will say this: um, uh, most unfortunately, I am like really kind of on a high of a really great travel experience despite the fact that my luggage is not home <laughs> and I don't have a seat app for tonight. So mm-hmm. um, there's that, but no, otherwise it, it really was pretty good overall. Um, I mean, I made some mistakes. I got on the transit. I went the wrong direction for three stops, realized that I had to get off and reorient myself, mm. you know, just the shit that you do. Cause you don't know what you're doing. Um, right. But yeah, and the and the fact that work was paying for a good portion of it was obviously the the thing that made it happen. So I feel very blessed that I had this opportunity. I haven't had to work travel in years. Um, the last time I work traveled was to Montreal in like twenty seventeen. That was for a client, and then I went for a conference right before that, uh, the month before in October, I want to say, and that was down in New Orleans. Oh God, I want to go back to Orleans. So um, it really got, it, I, I got bit by the travel bug again. I get it. Why people want to go places and do things. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny because I've always felt like I'm a late bloomer in life. And several people are like, really? This is your first time in Chicago? I was like, yeah. Like, why else would I be here? Why would I come here? 
Not that it's not a beautiful city and it doesn't have great people in it, but it's not on my radar, like as a thing that I have to do. But now I look forward to going back and doing even more things, seeing more people, um, that kind of stuff. So, cause I was now, I've never been there for IML was never there for bear pride weekend back in the day. Um, Mm -hmm. and all that jazz. So yeah, yeah, Yeah. yeah. it was, it was good. So I want to thank everyone for being hospitable and nice. That's the other thing. You know, Midwest nice is a thing. And most everybody, like, especially on the apps, they were all so pleasant. They were like, what brings you to Chicago? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking to them. And they're like, well, welcome to Chicago. Like, they were just nice. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, Apparently, Minnesota is going down to there. Because if you want really nice people, go to Minnesota. (laughs) Not we're biased or anything. Well, you know, I have been to Minnesota before, but the last time I was there, honestly, was when I was dating my ex and we were there for a leather run. And that wasn't that it was a bad experience, but it was a new experience. So I wasn't quite paying attention to the lay of the land, mm. I want to say, um, because I was there with the person I was dating and it was the first time I ever went to a leather run. Mm. So that was really where a lot of my focus went. But yeah, no, no, no. It was, but that was the thing I was pleasantly surprised with Chicago. I, I, not that I thought people would be rude. Uh, Oh, I was also complimented by a local resident of many years that I was able to keep up pace walking. Um, (laughs) because in big cities, walking is a big, is a big deal. Like you do a lot of it. You, you do it to get to the transit. You do it to get to the bus. You do like, so I quickly picked up on that, that like people, tourists don't, tourists wander, residents walk. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the person said a Chicago walk is not as fast as a New York walk, but it's close. And they were pleased to see that I kept a decent pace. Um, and this wasn't backhanded given my size that I'm a bigger boy. They were like, they were like notably other people like you in the past have visited and they struggle. <laughs> so I was like, I mean, there's a part of me that's like, Oh, hi, Lloyd. You missed it. I was already talking about you, but welcome. And I'm glad that you were able to make it. And you're here in the U.S. watching live instead of on a time delay and across the pond and passing out in bed (laughs) while we're airing. (laughs) So, um, yeah. So get this. How about Lloyd? And I missed this somewhere along the line. So if this was familiar to the two of you, I did not know that. And I'm not trying to spill any tea, but Lloyd's like... Well, I come to the U.S. every year before the pandemic. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm big into gaming. That's why I come here. And he always apparently goes to Chicago, and then he's going to be in Indianapolis. Oh. Oh, Gen Con? Right. Apparently, he works the event. And I'm just like, uh. Apparently, I'm a bumpkin, and I don't know crap, because I I missed this somewhere along the lines. I mean, I know about Gen Con. I've, I've heard about Gen Con, and I've. I've yet to attend, but um, it's been on the radar for a few years now, but it's a a large event that I'm unfamiliar with, and I would feel awkward. So it, I, it's it's one of those situations where it's where it's kind of to me like and it's not the same, but like it's it's kind of like IML to me. It's a big event it's and there's huge. a lot of people and right. and that always can be intimidating for me even though I'm quite social and what have you I am social within a limit yeah. right. Carl Carl took me to a couple of Gen Cons oh. or is it just one I don't remember uh, but we played 7C uh, Shadowrun D&D oh uh, and so we we got to play a whole bunch of different stuff while there. Mm, uh, nice. It's it's nice. it's a fun little event. Um, mm, and and recently, <laughs> recent uh, like pre pandemic at least, uh, there was locally in the area, though not necessarily part of the event, there was live Critical Role, mm. which I would love to go to a Critical Role live. Same. 
same. Well, I mean, who knows? Maybe one year we could somehow get us all to OTR to Gen Con. And if that's where Lloyd's going to be, then we might also run into him there. He goes, if you want to do a Cubs out loud at Gen Con, I promise I will try to keep you boys away from weird nerds. <laughs> okay. I, I want to put a caveat because I, I have a rule. Uh, part of part of a, my rules of life. Um, weird is good. Strange is bad. Normal is boring. And odd is neutral weird. So weird nerds are the good ones. So I think he means strange, but it, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. But um, no, so it was beautiful running into Lloyd. By the way, for the record, Lloyd is tall. <laughs> if, if none of y'all had any scope of his height. I mean, he was um, kind of uh, scrunching down to get into the shot. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, telegram so, so we actually met at the Leather Archives and, and Museum. He had gotten into town that very day. Um, and he was like, you know, we were trying to figure out our schedules. And so he he and his um, guest slash host friend, Todd, um, met me there i was already inside the building i got there before they did um and so i was already inside touring and <laughs> lloyd's messaging me he's like we're here and i'm like oh i'm already inside he's like well i guess we'll meet you um so it was quite comical and then lloyd and i met apparently lloyd spotted me in the dark room which is hysterical so at the leather archives and museum there is a beautiful uh one room that is painted black like a, a back room in a bar it's aesthetically done very well and mike ruiz the photographer has this amazing um art gallery display of photographs that he's done with the leather king community it's gorgeous um yeah. i'll have to send you some pictures damon and mm -hmm. uh, but what's funny about it is that there's a t a flat screen tv up in the corner kind of tucked away that looks like it's playing porn and it's like porn light like there's no real like porn but it's very adult and mm -hmm. kind of you know risky or whatever but it makes it feel like it's a black uh, a back room in a bar um nice it, that's what was hysterical about it is like apparently i was standing there and lloyd saw me but he said he didn't want to bother me or come in because <laughs> uh, he spotted me first and the very first thing he one of the first things he said to me was he was like you look so different without a hat because you frequently are wearing your cubs out loud hat right 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 and i forgot and so there were two things i forgot on this trip I forgot a hat, which I really could have used because in the Midwest, sun. it was blazing hot in the full sun with no clouds when you're walking to transit. So I got some color on my face um, and I wished I'd had a hat. And the other thing was I forgot my uh, neck pillow for travel. Like, so if mm. you're on a plane or whatever, you can kind of keep your head upright. It was only like an hour and a half flight, so it wasn't bad. But um, mm. there, you always leave something at home. So those were the those were the things I forgot, but yeah, it was um, it was quite comical. Uh, but yeah, so no, I if one of the first things I noticed was like Lloyd is tall. I don't know. I'm gonna say close to six foot, um, or more than six feet, and I was kind of like, wow, it was uh, it was quite fun. But yeah, no, it was um, it was so great. So you never know, audience members, when you're gonna run into a host in the wild, and for my co-host, you never know when you're gonna run into a patron randomly somewhere. So, well, uh, considering this one was kind of plain. Uh, honestly, we would have completely missed each other if he hadn't said something in, at the end of the last week's show in the that's chat. Because that's why we both would have been plain. right. Like we were, both would have been in Chicago at the same time and completely missed each other. And then I, you know, I kept thinking about I don't really know that many people in Chicago. <laughs> Once I landed there, I was like, oh, actually, I do know some people here, <laughs> but like it's just not on my radar to think of them and like, and plus I'm not one of those people that like, I didn't want to hit people up at the last minute and be like, Hey, surprise, I'm in your city. We should hang out. Cause your schedule be damned. You know what I mean? Like I was yeah. like, right. I'm not going to do that to folks. So but we're considerate people. Yeah, yeah. 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 So no. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, it, the biggest thing, honestly, at the airport at O'Hare on coming home, I had this moment when I was walking through the terminals, trying to get to the gate. Um, and it was busy. There was lots of people. Many, 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 many people. I was wearing my mask. Um, and it occurred to me, I had this thought, and I was trying to correct the thought, because the thought was, America's back to normal. Mm. And it was the word normal that I was like, well, I don't. I was struggling with the word normal, but what uh, the reason I was thinking of it is because like this is this reminds me a lot of what it was like before the pandemic. 
mm, mm-hmm. you know, masses of people um, traveling and stuff. Like I felt for these adult chaperones, there was probably 20 to 30 young black ladies. Um, I don't know what their collective or their group was. They were all wearing like black spandex kind of shirts and windbreakers and stuff. They all had the same logo, but I think there was only two adult chaperones for all of them. Um, and they were trying to keep them corralled together and hand them their tickets and the passes and the thing. And like, Oh my gosh, I was like, yeah, yeah, was there, like that's that's a lot. Plus, you know, just general public and and all those kind of things. Right, and overpriced everything. Right, holy bejeebus. And what, that's another uh, sidebar, quick comical thing. So at work, they're like, "Oh, Chicago is one of those expensive, more expensive cities. We're going to give you a couple more dollars for your stipend for meals." A couple more dollars. Yeah, sure, that yeah. helps. My stipend. Listen to this. My stipend was sixteen. Per meal. So we won't go there. <laughs> so, yeah, like <laughs> the look on David's face. So yeah, that was that was that was fun. So I get to turn in receipts tomorrow when I do my travel report and be like, hey, um, you know, that's that's that thing. Lloyd says what? <laughs> Quote, hey, surprise! I'm in your city. We should hang out. Your schedule be damned, end quote, is my grinder bio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Thanks for paying for a third of my meals. Um, anyway. Oh, yeah. It, and I I screwed up the, the poor server at the place that Carlos and I had dinner. I was like, because work, you can't have alcohol. And I'd had a beautiful um, cocktail. Mm-hmm. So and so I intentionally told her, I said, I need like, and plus we got a multi-course meal. So there was an appetizer and then there was the main meal and there was dessert. Plus there was a cocktail. So I was trying to tell her, I was like, okay, these things need to be on one check and this needs to be another check. But I didn't fully explain it. I realized correctly. Cause she walked away and I said to Carlos, who I was having dinner with, I said, I don't think she understood what I meant. And he goes, I would agree. Cause I'm not sure what you meant <laughs> 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 or something of that sort. So, um, she came back and then I explained, I was like, okay, I'm traveling for work. I need these two things on one check for me and everything else that I ordered. Also, I want those, but I need them on a separate check. And then he has his own, whatever. So, yeah, mm. it was, um, it was quite interesting and fun. Plus I learned a bunch about the culture and the, the history of the city, um, especially in terms of like the gay history and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was good. So I'm going to stop gushing and carrying on and all that jazz. An hour later. It hasn't even been an hour yet. Fine. In any case, uh, I believe it is now time for this. (laughs) Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, We got a whole bunch of uh, follows and likes. Um, and plus, Facebook has changed their process for pages and stuff. It's a little wonky. It's a new administrative interface. Um, so first, we have the following people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to re- be redundant. The fo- <clears throat> These individuals are now following us on Facebook. <laughs> so we would like to thank Sidekick Productions, Pupzio 2021 World Pet. Oh, I wonder who he is. Yeah. Um, Fayez, HMD, and Chris GLC. They have followed us on Facebook. Now, the reason why I'm being specific is because the following people we would like to thank for following and liking us mm. on Facebook. And yes. that is Andre N. Ayala, Ginger Reddy, John Jacobs, Jason Christopher Robert Shaw, Omega Pup Giggle, Wilfredo Hernandez, Edwin Rivera, Jack Lee, Joseph, uh, Joseph, uh, sorry, Sion, Brian Simmons, Gabe Montez, and Samora Eaglin. My apologies if I butchered your names. Uh, so thank you for following and liking us. And we also got a Facebook comment post uh, regarding Cubs Out Loud 656 nostalgia for sale? Question mark. Uh, Doug Joy said, looks around the room at toys. Nah, no way. LOL. <laughs> 
that was the Facebook stuff. Mr. Damon, what about YouTube? Speaking of, of Doug Joy, um, and also speaking of COL 656 and Sorry for Sale, we got a comment from Doug Joy, and his comment was, short answer, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Meaning he was answering the question, is nostalgia for sale? <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I think we got a bunch of new people on Twitter. Yeah. A lot of people with long numbers. <laughs> I feel about that. We've got Mr. Riff 101, Sustrisno Medin, Madon, something like that. Uh, Farak uh, Yua, 0378390, Jeffers, there's three seven zero zero three six three nine banging dad xxx uh shadowlands that's a name. with two x's on either side uh beefy men two jad underscore umard umard oh uh, will roll gay 24 gino get Gepi- 2021 jps marco and two five five zero eight five Four five, and Mario eight zero nine nine five zero three nine. Uh, I see what you're doing there, Damon. Copy pasting that username to see who it is on Twitter. <laughs> uh huh. Mm-hmm. Sure the fuck did. I mean, there's <laughs> three X's and it's banging without a G. Yeah. So. Right. Had to figure that one out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Battle follow? We will find out. In any case, <laughs> uh, Gary, uh, I believe we have a patron update. Did I? Was there supposed to be something I was supposed to update on that thing? Uh, I will give you... Oh, wait. No, I think it already is uploaded. Um, so we wanted to recognize our patrons as we've been doing uh, oh. every month this year. So before we get to them, we want to welcome our newest buddy level patron, JR the Hiker Bear. Yay! They joined us on July 19th, and JR um, is a uh, many year friend of mine he um is known as the uh kitchen bitch my my co-kitchen uh <laughs> coordinator for the pride event um and so he started listening um in the past month or two and he had, he had made a comment to me he's like uh, uh especially about drag race he was like asking and then he actually messaged me damon i forgot to mention this in zero there he messaged he messaged me and was like he wanted to know my thoughts on the finale and i said i haven't seen it yet i'm going to a gay bar to watch it live with a crowd and he's like oh he's like i can't wait to hear the episode <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to hear how this turns out <laughs> mm, yes so uh we also would like to give big bear cub hugs to our patrons overall uh charles w at the cubster level dave t lee Michael Q and Tim S at the Uber level, plus our buddies Lloyd G, Michael V, Zach B, and now JR. Yay. Yay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank recent you. shows. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the past month we had uh, several of them because this month happened to have uh, five Sundays in it. So, 653 was the what's going on for June of 2022. And then 654, we did a let's talk about sex awakening. Um, if I remember correctly, we were talking about like how we kind of discovered our sexuality mm-hmm. um, and what that experience was like for us as co hosts. In 655, we did a health alert uh, episode. This is kind of a new thing about beyond STIs. And this was me discussing and kind of introducing about meningococcal disease, the outbreak that has been happening in several places, but one main one is in Florida. And for those that are going to be traveling there, it is advised that you get your uh, vaccination ahead of time. Um, And I also talked about this little thing called monkeypox, which is now really kind of gotten some Mm -hmm. mainstream news representation. In fact, the CDC, I think, just reported over 5,000 cases here in the U.S. And apparently, we might be the nation with the most cases in the world now. Lovely. Right. Mm. So, 
Uh, you might want to listen to that one. Uh, then uh, COL 656 was nostalgia for sale, question mark. And this is where we talked about um, things from our youth, our childhood being marketed to us and kind of our thoughts about what that means and philosophies about why we're interested in it, why it's happening. Is it effective? As Doug said, yes, <laughs> um, it is It is working. And then last week, episode 657, we had AJ, um, a.k.a. Pop Zio on World Pet 2021, uh, where we discussed his title year as World Pet uh, for the past year and the upcoming World Bear Weekend 2022 taking place in Orlando, Florida, mm-hmm. uh, that Damon and I will be at uh, in just under two months. So... Uh, right. And I believe that code is still working, right? Uh, yes. yes, I believe in the episode. Uh, yeah, well, 2022. Our, our co-host said it was going to be good through the end of August, if I remember correctly, and the prices increase tomorrow. tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think so. So August 1st. So if you're listening to this by the podcast feed or the VOD, you're a little late, but um, uh, if you're you can, watching live, you can take, take advantage of that now. But still, you get the discount even if you do it tomorrow. It's just right. The overall. It's price. just after the price increase. Yeah. So yeah, those were the most recent episodes that we covered, and then um, we want to give congrats and a shout out to Paul Lanner, um, previous guest who's been on the show uh, on the success of the Hunters Against Hate event that he had. Um, there are some pictures that I'm including. We'll put on the blog. The first one is incredibly charming, if not disturbing, and there is this little girl. <laughs> at least I'm presuming a girl. I'm not really sure about their gender, and they're holding a toy chainsaw. It's like in a threatening way at Paul's <laughs> face. Right. It's so cute and endearing and at the same time disturbing, um, which is exactly what Paul would love um, about that. And then also uh, there's this lovely picture of a young individual with, I believe, their parent and Paul. And I included, I wanted to go over this. So um, from the Facebook event that uh, post that was on July 11th. Paul had put on that the amazing speech uh, that I'm about to read was given by Tommy Clancy, who is the Haunter of the Year Award recipient. So this is something that Paul began, um, that people get recognition um, for what their activism and stuff has done. So what Tommy said was, I am honored to be the recipient of the Haunters Against Hate Hunter of the Year Award. From a young age, I have been very passionate about Halloween. With my incredibly supportive parents, it wouldn't have been possible for me to get involved with the hunt industry. My family and I put on a home hunt every year, starting when I was eight years old. After a few seasons, my mom and I traveled to Columbus for the Midwest Hunters Convention. I walked into the convention center with the biggest smile on my face. I felt at home. I was surrounded with what I love. A few years back, I met Paul and was instantly made to feel welcome and loved. I am so thankful to have met him, the incredibly kind man that he is. He asked me to be in volume one of the Haunters Against Hate books, and I very excitedly accepted with my home haunt character. Eventually, I grew out of wanting to be on the home haunt. I wanted more. I am appreciative of Jenny Braverman for gracefully introducing my family to the Zombie Army Productions team. The next season, I started scaring at the Hell's Gate Haunted House. I'm very lucky and grateful to now be a part of the Zombie Army the most loving and rowdy group I could ever ask for. Zombie Army has taught me to be proud of who I am, something easier said than done. I have always preached acceptance of everyone, but at the same time have struggled with acceptance of myself. I am currently recovering from anorexia, a disease stemmed in hate and unacceptance. I didn't even know if I could be able to attend the ceremony because I was away from home for two months due to my treatment program. I used attending Haunters Against Hate, the event, as motivation. I was struggling to see the light at the end of the tunnel for so long, but that's just what Haunters Against Hate is for me. That light at the end of the long fucking tunnel. I was able to muster all my might and get through it, and I owe it to Paul and the love of my family. Thank you for this honor, Paul, and for the work you do for our community. I got a, I got a better sound for this. So, 
I, I wanted to read that because I think sometimes, you know, when we have guests and we talk about the different things, we're not really sure of the, I guess, what I call the ripple effects, like the things that we do and how they impact people. And I thought this was awesome that not only was this person recognized for their efforts, but they also, like, in acceptance, paid back their thank you for the work that um, mm-hmm. Paul has done and, and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, like it, it, the, the reason why I'm, I'm really appreciative and supportive of what Paul does is it's not something that I necessarily am interested in. Halloween is not a big thing for me. I don't go see scary movies. I couldn't really ever care about going to a haunt, but that doesn't invalidate it. Right. It's a part of our community. There are people who love it. I know a handful of people who are very passionate about this stuff and put a ton of creative like artistic work and effort into making elaborate like cosplay designs and haunt amusements and different things of that sort and it just goes to show you know that our tapestry as a community is is really um colorful and you know has a lot of different aspects to it so that's why i wanted to help recognize that and speaking of recognitions our previous guest joshua pangborn from sidekick productions hmm I'm going to refer to that, is continuing on their new film project. We've talked about A Taste of Youth uh, with their fundraising campaign that launched on Indiegogo. Um, and I believe right about now it may be ending. So if you're interested, you can go visit atasteofyouth.com to see how, how you can help with that. Um, even if the campaign has ended, I'm pretty sure that uh, Joshua and the whole team and Nakia would appreciate any support that you can give. Um, so... Be sure to reach out to them if you would like to help. What's that? Currently, it looks like it is closed. It says closed. I don't know what yeah, I, I couldn't remember the end date. I thought it was coming up. I wasn't sure when. Okay. But I'm sure you can still contact them if you want to. Check it out, because it's going to have some good music in it, I know for sure, because one of the the music writers is uh, Nikia, who is second place of the first uh, season of The Voice. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. I believe it's time for this. All right, that's enough of that. <clears throat> so... My tweet is not much of a surprise. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. We call this Christmas oh. in July. <laughs> Mm-mm. Big Daddy Mac 64 put a, posted a picture of him in a Santa hat and well, I'm not sure if he's wearing anything under uh <laughs> below his torso. Uh, well, let's just pretend. That. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to assume not. Whether that's a good assumption or not, that's beside the point. I was abused by the fact that you like introduced what the title was, and then there was kind of this pregnant pause. And I'm like, oh, this is all of the hosts taking in this picture. Right. For all that it is. Because mm-hmm. this is a ginger bear that has freckles on a really thick hefty forearm that is bent uh he has fur all over the place beautiful big white beard he is the epitome of what you would think of as a like almost hyper masculine santa okay. claus um yes very much daddy. like <laughs> the daddy bear. you're gonna be okay damon he's <laughs> 6'2 340 pounds um this I... is his profile I went to his Twitter, so I don't Uh-oh. know if I'll be okay. Hello. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, is going to hit a lot of your buttons. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Okay, we're going to close that because I need to move on. Okay. Well, you clicked follow, right? Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! If you go back a little bit, there's a throwback to when he had just like a, a Fu Manchu mustache. That's interesting. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Anyways, I will check that click out. Later. Follow and yeah, don't get <laughs> lost down. Yeah, the... don't get lost. Don't go. Don't fall down. Don't fall down the Twitter hole yet. Too late. Anyways, <laughs> what a great thing to share. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. He says it's pretty hot here. No, you, <clears throat> no, you will all be good, good because you know I know, and I know, then you know what. I still think you're uh-huh. awesome. Mm-hmm. You know what? Mm-hmm. You might want to share that with Lloyd in the chat. <laughs> He'll get it eventually. He might have already. <clears throat> Link in chat, please. Oh, nope. no, he's still hey. with us. <laughs> that, that, that did not copy the date. Hold on. Well, no, there he we kind go. of made reference that even though like he's in the U.S., he still might fall asleep while <laughs> listening to us. So that's why I was saying. Mm-hmm. He does say so, he has demons taste in that. So. Yes, he does. <laughs> So with that, um, I actually, yes, I actually have two um, tweets to share. Um, the first one I titled "I'm Loving It," um, and it's because it's from Bear Lover eighty four xxx, and it says, "Sorry for delay, been traveling, so this finally came in. What does everyone think?" I'm loving it, is what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and it is. Oh, Jesus Christ, this guy. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous band. Bear, big, uh, just, mm, just, and this is really great leather on him. It looks really good. It, it, it um, emphasizes his, 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 his stocky frame. Um, and I, I, I just, I think it's, yeah. And you get a front and back view, and thank heavens for that because. There's a lot it, of backbeats. Yes. Yeah, he is beautiful. So thank you, Bear Lover 84 for that. Get that in the notes here. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. I have woken up by the it, sounds of thirst. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and he's just, it's just, just a, he's just a sexy man. So, mm-hmm. and then with that, uh, I found this Twitter recently. Um, they're called Vintage Smuttons. Um, and they basically have taken, like, I'm assuming, you know, vintage, quote unquote, being like, you know, photos from like Bear magazines um, and like basically put them up. And then they also include like these little buttons, which are, are also of, other pictures I think that are also kind of vintage. Um, and this one was I titled Bubba's Jock Strap. Um, so Vintage Buttons has you notice know, this Bubba's Jock Strap is going to smell incredible. And it is um a picture of a this looks like either late two late nineties, early two thousands, um, just based on like the the um, facial hair and such, um, but he is a you know decently sized big man, big ass balls in the first picture, um, and uh, he's wearing a jock strap and it's in various places on the body, and it's just he's really hot my guy, and it's funny I typically the reason I started following this was because they started showing they had like a um, um, they were showing pictures of of um, uh, like people from Bear Magazine, and they were kind of talking about that. And it was just rather interesting because I remember that magazine, and I remember all the pictures from it. Well, not all the pictures, but I remember stuff from it, and I was kind of like, "Oh, that's kind of cool to see." Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. It's an interesting like Twitter account. I'm scrolling through and looking, and and it is like it's a retrospective in a way. There's some color, but it's mostly black and white or sepia tone, like, um, it, and sepia because like it's a vintage photo, not because they're you know reshading it necessarily that way. But yeah, they do have these like buttons and other things. Some of these pictures, I know exactly these issues. Um, I have been a collector of Bear magazine for a number of years. I don't have a full, hundred percent complete collection, but it's pretty. Um, well uh, contained the the issues that I do have and it, this is taking me right back to the Leather Archives and Museum the library section um, it does not necessarily have magazines in it although it might and I just didn't see it um, like I said this reminds me of that uh, section about the Pulp Fiction like that it was just all this vintage um, 
material that uh, really kind of isn't around as much anymore. Um, you know, and, and the media has changed as well. Now pretty much everything's digital. Hence, we're looking at a digital account of previous print material <laughs> from back in the day. Right. Nice. nice. Um, I had two that I picked for this uh, month. The first one I titled Can't Wait for Folsom. Uh, Cyrus N, known as at Beefy Cyborg. Um, his caption is Can't Wait for Folsom this year. And it's a black and white, professionally done photo. I can't quite read the name of the photographer, um, their watermark on it, but um, he is a beautiful, uh, thick muscle uh, sir in this leather uh, harness deal. I just realized the harness kind of looks similar to the harness that you had posted, Damon. Um, it's not identical, but it's of a similar style. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, the reason why I like this photo is because he's at Folsom or in a crowd event of some kind. And there are all these people around him. Like there's a guy on a phone. There's um, some other folks in the background, some people smiling, some people walking. Like it's just kind of one of those candid shots that somebody captured in the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, which I thought was was pretty cool. It's funny. This was one of the ones I was thinking about, which, like sharing for this episode, and I changed my mind. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, and this is wild. So, how about my second post? I just clicked on it, and it says it's been deleted. Oh, how, how did that happen? Oh, that's interesting. Boo. Well, I'll replace it with a different one. <laughs> All right. Because I just spotted that. this one and I liked it. I'm not better, but just as well. Because um, I didn't know it existed. Uh, and it's two people that I both uh, kind of follow and have interest in. It's called Primal in the Desert. Um, this is Skin and Earth and BJ Cub All 10. Right. And it is a beautiful, uh, kind of tinted, not quite black and white photo uh, of them in silhouette in the desert. And uh, BJ Cub is doing what he does best, which mm -hmm. is part of his title. Uh, and apparently it was the photography was done by semi-charmed Cub. Um, so, yes. Yes. It is beautiful. It is it is what men enjoying men, and it is very nice. So yes. indeed, I do like this picture. I actually retweeted this one as well. <laughs> right. Funny that. Funny that. So, Damon yeah. and Gary, um, what is your uh, same <laughs> uh, link recommendation? <laughs> to get away I didn't even oh. <clears throat> thirst. Right. So, um, I shared a link to the Umbrella Academy season three. Um, I'm sure Gary has also. I have not finished it, um, oh. but I am on. I'm just going to pull this up here really quickly. Um, I am on episode six of ten. So, but I, I'm, I am so happy. For this show, I'm happy for the cast. I am, I am, in awe of everything that is going on, going on this season. Um, as always, they are doing amazing work, and I'm just, it's just great. I am, I am. We are watching it slowly, I think, because we don't want it to end. And this is right, and this is the series slash uh, last season. Um, series finale in last season so um yeah if you're if you're not familiar with the umbrella academy if i recall correctly it's a graphic novel series mm -hmm. um or comic book one or the other um that was adapted and netflix um did it they've done three seasons um it's so difficult to explain if you've never seen it it's basically like sci-fi superhero fantasy mm -hmm. about these orphans that are adopted by this mad genius quote unquote well i yeah they're not orphans they're yeah they're, siblings well 
Correct. Yes, they were all born on the same day at the same time, all around the world. Right, but they are not what we traditionally think of as siblings, but they were raised as siblings. Correct. With with uh, with powers. Right. We'll leave it at that. Um, so it goes on a wild thing. Uh, I, for some people, it might be a little difficult to follow all the plot stuff um, mm-hmm. because they go kind of all over the place and throughout time. Um, I'll be very interested to know when you're done with the the whole thing, Damon, what your thoughts are on the very mm-hmm. end, um, how it plays out. But yeah, no, it, it's definitely both of us picked it because season three just came out in the month of July and um, it's good. I mm-hmm. really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can't say anything else because I don't want to give it anything away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Understood. 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 I am looking forward to finishing it. And if you want to so, get caught up, all three seasons are available in Netflix because that, that's how they roll. Yeah. Right. Um, I would not recommend binging all three seasons at once. I would probably, if you're going to binge, I would binge a season at a time. Right. Like one one week at a time or something so you can kind of absorb and process each season. Right. Because this season, lot. this season really halts harkens back to what's happened before mm. and if you haven't gotten that far damon that's not really meant to be a spoiler but yeah i'm good you're good yeah um and then the only other thing i had as a pick is on disney plus um ms marvel mm. this lovely six episode series i i almost want to say it's my favorite series that disney plus has done Mm. Um, it is so well executed. The the cultural significance of um, her being Pakistani, living in New Jersey, like um, it, it's not without its criticisms. There are some things that are like could have been done better. It would have, I think, it would have been nicer if they had done an eight, ten, or twelve episode season um, to really flesh it out. Because uh, I feel like some things weren't covered very well, and there seemed to be some time jumps like some some things where i'm like well what about like so as a viewer if i start asking what about it says to me maybe you guys could have done some more work um done some things but otherwise having never read the comics uh it just it was such a it was such a delight and a pleasure um to see something you know she's a teen she discovers she has powers she lives in a family who you know, she struggles with a little bit in terms of like her culture and her place in the world. Cause that's what teens do. Um, and how does she figure things out? Plus, you know, there's like hormones and potential for romantic and stuff and all that jazz. Plus, you know, being super powered and having people coming after you. And of course there's an evil, you know, bad presence in the world and just, you know, trying to figure all that stuff out. I thought it was done so, so well. And, you know, for our community, the LGBTQ plus community, anything about a person dealing with a coming out has a parallel for us. And by that, I mean, like, coming out as a superhero um, or someone with powers, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, those kind of things is is relevant and can be seen. So and it's it's just so colorful. Um, yeah, I, I just am so proud of this particular series because the producers, the directors, like they are of the culture and so kind of like moon Knight showing off egyptian culture um you know in those ways um i think this is that and then some Mm. um, because they actually go uh to i think it's karachi um i could get the city wrong because it's been a couple of weeks now since i've watched it but yeah it was um and i loved how they did episodic like reveal so it was six episodes over six weeks and um, if you haven't been paying attention to the news, Netflix is having a lot of different issues. Um, they've been canceling some things, subscribership, blah, 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 blah. And one of the things that they're talking about, which I think they're late to the game, is that I think binging is kind of going away. That mm. audiences really appreciate having something to look forward to. Because, you know, if you guys remember back in the 90s, there was this whole water cooler thing. NBC Thursday nights. People watch stuff. They talked about it at work. And then when you binge, you don't really quite do that. Like you absorb so much in such a short frame of time. Mm. It's a it's a whole different experience. And so I, I like how Disney Plus has really pivoted to if it's a series, we're going to most likely release one a week. Um, so it gives you something to keep coming back for. And then 
all the other business that comes off of that, all these YouTube like recap discussion debate shows and, you know, Easter egg stuff and all that. So yeah, I, I, I highly recommend it if you're interested. And trailers will be available on the uh, website to, to the trailers as well. Cool. Nice. And with that, I think that's the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, end of one month, beginning of next, to when people can listen to this podcast. But there's plenty of ways to contact us if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything. You can do that mm-hmm. by commenting on our blog at comes.lot.com where you can get links to everything we talked about today. You can also uh, shoot us an email at comesoutlot at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 COL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Or you can t- chat us up directly through Telegram at in our uh, COL Entourage channel on, on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash COL. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check it out over on Google at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash COL, where you can also subscribe to that. Uh, you can find various accoutrements, such as a Cups Out Loud hat, or a Consent is My Four Play shirt in various different styles at uh, zazzle.com slash cubs out loud some of those designs were designed by smashing you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashies bear you can also become a patron uh, like the patrons that we just talked about <clears throat> you can do that at patreon.com slash cubs out loud if you'd like to send us a donation to help try to improve this podcast you can do that at paypal.me slash cubs out loud you can find us in basically almost any uh, podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. Um, and rate us and review us there, because the more you rate us and review us, the more people will find us due to recommendation engines. It really does help. But you can find me anywhere on the internet. It's Box at Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, where I stream Bears and Dragons, which is currently on a hiatus until I get my AC fixed. <laughs> Understood. If you wish to get in touch, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub Seven Nine. That's T H E A T R E C U B Seven Nine. On most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm-mm. But you'll probably like it. Mm-hmm. If you would like to find me <laughs> online, Boy, it definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> You could pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamer73. Um, I also have a Twitter account, Gamer73XXX, um, where that would be where some of the naughty stuff goes. Not necessarily my naughty, but the things that I like that are naughty. Um, so, yeah. And uh, if you follow me anywhere online, um, just send me a message so I know you're not a bot or some other random thing. Mm-hmm. Just, to, just saying, you know. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>